All right. Well, welcome to um, the Willie Lawson uh, Lawson for Campaign um, online town hall. Uh, we we experimented with this a little bit ago, and uh, we were um, and I am sure that it is going to be something that I'm going to use that we're going to use continuously, uh, not just in the can not just during the campaign, but as we um, as we continue to um, interface, even after we're elected, continuing to interface with the uh, general public. Now, the meet, hopefully, the meet, the on down, online town hall meetings um, that you'll see once elected will be from the office in county center um, or somewhere in the district, because I think it's important that um, I think that is continuously important that you have access, ready access to your elected officials. I am a, I am of the mindset that part of the problem with government and especially um, local government is that um, they have managed to sequester themselves away from the electorate. They have ex they've they've managed to sequester themselves away from you. They have managed to somehow um, become more difficult to reach, more difficult to get a hold of, more difficult to talk to. Um, it it sort of did my heart good to um, be at the Tiger um, Tiger Bay Club meeting and hear how um, newly elected city councilman Guido Maniscalco decided that he would he would act on a um, an email that he got um, from a constituent about a road problem and Guido decided you know what not that he would just go over and see the road problem that he would go over and see the person who um, who sent the complaint and knocked on the he said he knocked on the guy's door. It was really funny. The guy came to, to the door in his bathrobe and, and was saying like, "Who the heck are you?" And he said, "I'm Guido Maniscalco. I'm I'm your city council person. You sent to me an email about a bad road situation." And, and the dude was blown away. And I think that that's the sort of the level of customer service that uh, all our uh, local um, elected officials should um, should bring to the table. That's the le that's the level. That's the bar there. And um, so we are we are starting here during the campaign with online town halls. Now, it may take a while for them to catch on, and that's fine. Um, but I, I feel as we continue to do them, as we continue to in, invite people to them, as we continue to um, get better at it, I think that they'll, be, that they'll become more popular, and I think that people will learn to not only like it, but learn to expect it, uh, because it, it, it is a way to uh, get my face on your computer or your smartphone or whatever you're, whatever you're using um, to really, you know what, get your questions asked. And so what we're going to do is if you have a question that you want to ask me about me or the campaign or um, what we're, I mean, what my plans are if elected, um, then you can send me to do, to do that just send me an email at willie at lawson for commission.com or wls860 at gmail.com wls at excuse me wls860 at gmail.com uh, and i and i'd be ha and i'll be happy to um i'll be thrilled thrilled as a matter of fact to um to answer your questions and um, to the best to the very best of my ability because I think it, I, th I think it's important that you get to um, ask me questions ask me um, one of the things that I am um, I want to talk about is transportation but you know what I, I, I don't want to talk to you about transportation I think that a lot of politicians especially who are on the County Commission and City Council right now are talking to you about um, transportation and what the city ought to do and what and how you ought to pay for it and they're talking to you about the Rays stadium and the Rays situation they're talking to you what's not happening is enough you talking to me you you telling me what you think and how you feel um, because I think that somehow uh, elect, elected officials believe that they know more about a particular situation and because they know more about the particulars of, of a situation that they are better set to make decisions about how the, how your money is spent. Um, there's something I think is extremely disturbing 
um, that is th that is happening, and we see it come out in the rail situation as well as the light rail situation. That local governments, people who have been elected elected to county commission district one or two or three or four, are are, are having to be concerned or concerning themselves with a picture that's larger than their constituency. When they start talking about, well, it'll be good for the region. Well, the region frankly isn't your responsibility your responsibility is is it good my responsibility is it good for district three? First, is it good for district three second is it good for hillsborough county pasco and pinellas and polk have elected their own officials to take care of their cities and their counties in polk pasco and pinellas county it is not my decision or my my call if something is good for Pinellas County or, or good for Pasco County or good for Polk County if it's good for the region not my call my call is is it good for first is it good for district 3 and if it's good for district 3 is it good for Hillsborough County because what I believe is that if that's something is good for District Three, it'll be good for dis it'll be good for Hillsborough County, and if it's good for Hillsborough County, it'll be good for Pasco, Pinellas, and Polk. That's where I need to concern myself, um, and that's what these questions are all about. And I'm going to go to uh, Google. I'm going to go to my Gmail, open it up, see if you've sent questions, because that's how this works. That's how this works. Um, all you have to do is, is go to is send me a question at WLS860 at gmail.com. That's WLS860 at gmail.com. And I've got my email open right this very minute. And I am ready to answer, um, answer questions. Uh, you know what? Um, somebody, uh, my friend um, Don Cruz, gave me a question that he was asked. Uh, by a local newspaper in his run for county commission, but, and um, I wanted to answer that question. Although I know it's kind of weird because I haven't been asked, but I'm going to answer that question. Um, the Florida Sentinel Bulletin asked Don Cruz, "What are you going to do for the black community? What are you going to do for our community?" And I and, I, and I'm telling you that that is a I mean that's a question that minority. Uh, that minority newspapers will ask because they believe that they're advocates for their communities. So that kind of community, I mean, that kind of question doesn't bother me, doesn't upset me, uh, doesn't throw me off my game, you know, it doesn't make me talk about identity politics and all that stuff. You know, there's a reality to what we're dealing with. I want to do something that I think that, has, that really hasn't been done or hasn't been done to the level that I want to do it. I want to coordinate efforts with both city government and the Hillsborough County school system to do the best job we can for the citizens of District 3 because th those that's an overlapping, twice an overlapping um, constituency. Many of the constituents of District 3 are also con constituents of school board district five and city council district five. So it only makes sense that especially with um, limited resources and dwindling resources that we make the best of those dollars not to have situations where we have redundancy where there's a city function and a county function and a school board function that are the same but we take um, any nut, whatever the situation is, and we can make it better because now we have three entities of government working in concert, maybe dividing responsibilities and being able to give our whole heart and our whole and, and, and as, as much resource as we can to our part of that particular situation. The idea is to work together seamlessly. Now, there'll, there'll be bumps along the beginning, especially when we try this, because of, um, frankly, because of politics, because of territory and politics. 
One of the interesting things about a District 3 is that most of it is contained within the boundaries of Hillsborough, of, of, of the city of Tampa. And it is obvious that the city of Tampa rules the roost inside the district, I mean, inside the city limits of Tampa. That it is, um, the county is a, a truly an afterthought. Hillsborough County government is truly an afterthought when inside the boundaries of the city of Tampa. I want to change that. I want it to be a partnership. I, you know what, I think that it's important. It's, it concerns me, even as a member of, of the county commission, that we have failing schools in my district, that my district has failing schools and my constituency sends their children to failing schools and are forced to send their, their children to failing schools. That affects me. It affects me, um, it affects my district that um, we don't have the educational background um, in my district to support uh, to, to support the economic development that we so sorely need. That I want um, I, I want to make sure that um, that employers potential employers know that if they move their business to District Three, that we can supply them a a, a workforce, a trained workforce, even with entry level jobs, which means that our high schools and our middle schools have to be up to snuff because those are normally the kids who who, who, who will take those entry level um, entry level positions, those low or no skill positions. And I want to make sure that um, any potential employers know that we are chock full and ready to uh, make sure that they have all the um, all the capable employees that they could ever imagine. Those, because those things really work together. Those are three things that work together, the educational, the educational bit and the cooperation between city and county government, that those are not necessarily adversarial. But the city government and county government inside, the, inside District 3 are not necessarily adversarial. Um, when we're talking about uh, the, the same constituency, the same people, it makes sense that they are not adversarial, that they are cooperative. And the school board is also cooper that cooperates with the city of Tampa and the and the um, the county of Hillsboro to make things better for the folks in District Three. I think that that is so amazingly important, so impressively important that there isn't any way I think that 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 we can move forward that we should move forward without it. There's no way that we can move forward, that we can be the engine of change for Hillsborough County, Central Florida, the state of Florida, and indeed maybe the entire nation with this model. We are not the only situation, we're not the only overlapping situation between county and city government or, 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 or municipalities. I mean, if we go ahead and play this scenario out, uh, we're talking about District 3 is, um, is in, Hills, in, in Hillsborough County is City Council District 5, School Board District 5, Congressional District 14, two, you know, two districts within, in, within the Florida Senate and the Florida House, and we all represent the same people. We all represent the same folks that we have crossover constituencies and that if we really work together as a team, as a team, that we can make true, I mean, that we can make real progress where we are, you know what, in our, in our constituency. And, be, and again, become a model for indeed the rest of the nation. That we aren't split just down political lines just because I'm a Republican and you're a Democrat or I'm a libertarian and you're I mean you you you're you're a Republican and we're just not going to work together or you're an independent and we're just not going to work together even though we are we said we rose our right hand and swore that we would well I'm going to take that that oath before it's given to me that I'm going to do my best to uphold the charter of Hillsborough County 
um, and represent the um, citizens of District 3 to the best of my ability, so help me God. And I think that that's what's missing. You know what? And and I'm not. I'm not necessarily blaming anyone. That this hasn't happened before. I think that it just hasn't happened to the deg degree that I'm. I think it should happen. It's because it, it 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 just never has. No one's ever pushed it because I think that everyone's been busy and there's lots and lots to do in a burgeoning area like District Three and Hillsborough County and the City of Tampa. Um, I want to work with I want to work with um, city government. I want to work with the mayor. I want to work with Frank Reddick, who is the city city council member uh, of District Five in that area. I want to work with him. I want to uh, you know I want to sit down with those um, with Ed Naren and and um, the, uh, whoever is the replacement for Arthur Joiner. I want to sit down with them and say you know what this community. This community of people that we all represent, we have it. It, it, it is incumbent upon us to work together. And whoever and, and whoever ends up being the U.S. rep for district, I mean for District 14, uh, U.S. sister rep, we need to sit together and we work together. We need to sit at the same table and work together and to solve the problems, to solve the problems of education, to solve the problems of poverty, to solve the problems of crime. I think that that's the first thing that we that, that if, we, if we can get together as a team, Republican, Democrat, Independent, Libertarian, whatever. And work together as a team. I think that that's the first step to making some real change, to, uh, to affect positive change in District Three and in City Council District Five and School Board District Five and and U.S. Rep District Fourteen. I think that that's what what has to happen first. I mean, I think because I don't think, and I have not seen that, even with people who are all well, then quite frankly, on the same party. I think that. That what we've seen is that there's been a, uh, a a continuous separation, and it may simply have been because nobody wanted to step on anybody else's toes, especially when it came to the city and the county. Um, that everybody had their responsibilities, and they've all been um, clearly clearly delineated. And what I want to do is that I don't want to erase any of that delineation. But I think there are. But I'm sure. I don't think. I'm sure that there are projects that we can work on that, that, that we've that we've got to have the same mind on as we look at um, places like uh, Hillsborough Avenue between 40th Street and Nebraska Avenue and say that this is a thoroughfare a major thoroughfare through Hillsborough County what's it look like is this the, is this what we want it to look like and how do we make a difference? How does everybody make a difference? Because the county is responsible, the state is responsible, the city is responsible. How do we make a difference there? In that roadway, how do we how do we make a difference in the um, in the businesses that uh, that 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 come to that major roadway? We're talking about tens of thousands of vehicles pass through that street on a weekly basis. And that's a representation of, of District Three and Five, and that school board district, and the city—I mean, the state house and and Senate district, and the U.S. and the U.S. district. That's a representation of what it looks like. Now, when we compare and contrast um, that to somewhere like Highway 60 in Brandon, between um, Interstate 75 and Valrico Road. And we and we compare um, the level of development along that road. Which do we want? Do we want the same level of development? Do we want the same kinds of stores? Do we want the same kind of businesses? Do we want the same sort of road improvements that um, that that stretch of road enjoys in Brandon, in East Tampa? Do we want the same sort of thing? Do we want the same sort of wide, spacious, beautiful thoroughfares? Do we want that? Is that a good thing to have where we are? And I think it is. And I think the best way to do it is to work together as a team. 
I'm not trying to create some weird sort of regional um, non-voted um, governmental agency, not by any stretch of the imagination, but I do believe that we can all work, that we can all work together. And I think in, in, in order to get done what the things that we want to get done, to, to live in a place that we, we, we're proud of and to leave as a legacy, um, something that we can be proud of, we have to work together. There really isn't a choice. There's really not a choice. We must work together even if the letter after our names aren't the same. Even if, if we have D's and R's and L's and I's. Once elected, um, those aren't as important as the C in community. All right, we're going we're gonna to check. Um, let's see here. I'm looking to see if there are any questions in my inbox. And like I said, um, we may not have any questions for our first couple of meetings. And that's fine, too. Um, that's fine. We're, we're getting started. Uh, we may have people view, but they may, not have, they may not have questions. They may just want to listen to me rant a little bit and kind of find out where my head's at and kind of think of the things that I am looking forward to uh, dealing with. Maybe. Um, I would hope that soon after we do two or three, and we will, um, and I, if nothing else, to give you an update of where the campaign is and where we're going, um, and, we'll, and where we'll, we will be so you can see us in person and the things we'd like to do, um, that we'll get start getting questions on these in, in these online town halls, um, especially as I start inviting members of the press, which is the next stage. The next meeting, um, which will be next week, probably Wednesday at one o'clock, uh, we'll, uh, we will invite members of the press to tune in. Now, I don't know if they will or not. I mean, when you send somebody an invitation to a party, you would hope that they would come, but there's no guarantee that they will. Everybody is very busy. And that was my point of doing it online because if you're very busy, you don't have to leave your office. You don't have to leave your area. You can watch and participate where you are. You don't have to get in the car. You don't have to drive. You don't have to eat lunch. You can eat lunch where you are. You, I mean, I think that this is the easiest option. It's the easiest option. And so I hope it, so I really hope it catches on. Um, because if it does, that will tell me that you, as the constituency of District 3 in Hillsborough County, uh, like seeing um, your commission members and your elected officials face-to-face -face and being able to ask them questions on the fly without a filter. This is better than the debates because there's no filter. There's nobody else who's forming questions. You are forming the questions, and then you get to see you get to see if I answer them or not. Don't know about you, but I think that's better. I don't know about you, but I think that that's better. All right, here. Let's see if I can. All right, I had sent out. Unfortunately. I had sent out a um, an announcement on Facebook that this um, this town hall starts on at, at one at one thirty. I think I sent out the. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I think I sent it out and said one thirty. Did I say one thirty? And dun 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 dun. I think I did. Um, but on you on UStream, I said one o'clock. So I started at one o'clock. All right, so I'll tell you what, and uh, unless it really cranks up here in the less, in less a little bit, we're going to end it. To, we're going to end this at two o'clock. So if you're watching, tell your friends. If you've got something to ask, send an email right now to um, Willie at LawsonForCommission dot com. W i l l i e at the at, at sign. Uh, Lawson for commission.com Lawson L-E-W-S-O-N for 
the letter the the word for for uh, commission.com right, I'm going to go ahead and send a little uh, a little custom message out on Facebook join us and for those of you who watch my um, who, who listen to my internet radio show knows that I can, know that I can't type and talk at the same time but I'm going to try um, join us now at our online town hall let's go ahead and send that to 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 Twitter 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 and uh, your favorite Facebook right you gotta love Facebook right we'll go ahead and click the button there you are all right all right um again welcome to our town hall my name is Willie Lawson I am a uh, I'm a candidate for County Commission here in Hillsborough County Florida and uh, we're going to do the series of online town hall meetings uh, because I think it's the easiest way to um, answer your questions and I think that uh, making myself available to you during the campaign will be important and after I w if, I, if I'm blessed enough to win if you if you bless me with that honor then you can be assured that there'll be town hall meetings online and in the district often so I think the worst thing that elected officials do is sequester themselves away I think it's the worst thing they do is they sequester themselves away in the ivory tower where that ivory tower is in city hall or that ivory tower is in county center or that ivory tower is in the upside down pyramid of the school board building it's the worst thing they do because what happens is you get the, the higher of an office you get what i've seen is that the more assistance you have around you so what happens is that it's harder and harder for the people who vote for you the people who knock on doors for you the people who make phone calls for you to get you elected in the first place not just not just the people who uh, write checks people who put cash in the bucket it get makes you, it, elected officials make it harder and harder um, to hear from those from those folks let alone the people who didn't vote for them who didn't give them money who didn't make phone calls who didn't knock on doors but the reality is that now when you're in that position you you are the representative of a representative of all the people even the people that didn't vote for you even the people that voted for the other person and you are responsible to them this is why we're doing this meeting today because I want I want you to know I want people um, to understand that I'm already ready if I can say it that way yeah I'm already ready to communicate I'm already ready to um, make myself accessible not just here online but as the campaign goes on at, in public face-to-face -face, because believe me I think that this is important that, that that's important what we're doing here today is important being available online that everybody can can be where they are and if they have a question they can ask it just go to WLS860 at gmail.com to send your question online um, in, in an email to uh, WLS860 at gmail.com uh, where there's a question or a comment uh, about this format um, whatever it is send me a note and I am currently looking for notes to pop up in my email box and unfortunately I've yet to see any uh, I'm guessing that I've, I mean we've got a few viewers so I'm guessing that we will see one very soon um, it's interesting I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who lives in California um, that's uh, Shirley Huzar who's uh, a, the heart mind soul behind the urban game changers movement in California, in Florida, uh, and Louisiana, in New York, and Texas, um, and expanding every day into a new, st new state almost every day. And um, they're very concerned about what's going on around the country, what's going on uh, with the police and black folks, black men, black young men, young men especially. And I said to her, you know, 
incidents will happen anywhere, everywhere. But I am so glad I live in an area that uh, we have um, such cooperation between the community and our police department that when these situations pop up, we are able, we are able to, we are able to deal with them. You know what? We are able to deal with them um, in a way that doesn't propagate this violence. And um, so I'm I, again. I am. I, I, I'm thrilled that we are able to cooperate. That we have uh, a racial equilibrium that we can all live with. I, I, I'm thrilled that we can have the the sort of conversation without violence to protect ourselves and each other. I think that that's extremely important. Um, somebody is asking me on Facebook what the uh, what's the subject, uh, and I'll say you get to ask questions of me if you are watching. There you go. Yeah, and you know what, and and and, and you can ask me questions on Facebook, or you can ask me questions. Um, if you're not watching, but it certainly makes it easier and better if you're watching, so I can answer you. You know what? Just random questions tossed at me in my, fa you know what? In my um, my email email box is okay, but it's better if the person who asks the question is actually watching. Why? Because first of all, I might have already answered the question, or through what I've already said, you might have already been able to glean your answer. Whether I've said so um, explicitly or not, I might have answered the question implicitly, not explicitly, and that definitely moves things along. keeps keeps me from having to repeat that, and then and then the, the the shame of it is that you ask the question but you never get to hear the answer. So I think that it is it, it works better if indeed you are if you're watching if you're watching um, to, to ask a question. Don't you? Don't you think that's easier? Yes, I think that's easier. And I think that's better, 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 better. Yeah, you get to ask. You get to ask questions. Um. And you send the and you and you send the questions to wls860 at gmail dot com. I think that that's really very very important. Um, let's see here. People are asking for the link. Let's see if I can. I, I, again, really tough for me to uh, to do both. To let's see here. Is it there? Uh, I have, you know I have real trouble. Let's see here. We'll do it this way. Uh, copy, copy, copy. Because I can't write <laughs> and talk at the same time. If you, I mean, if you listen to the William Lawson show, I've done an internet radio. I've done an internet radio show on Blog Talk Radio since March of 2008, and I don't. And what I, what I don't know, and what I don't know is how um, people on radio will be talking and writing at the same time. I have not figured out how to do that, even with my time on television, and I, I was a contributor. On the Porsche Talk Radio on Television program, and um, have have not found a way to type and talk at the same time. Um, it's 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 either talking or typing. It's either listening or and or typing. It's not both. It's just not. It's just not both. And and women are going. Well, if you were a woman, you'd be able you'd be able to uh, to multitask. La 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 la. Well, I guess what? There's no such thing as multitasking, and if there was, I'd be good at it. There you go. So we are waiting for questions. It is um, 141, and uh, we're getting a little buzz out there and um, to see if we can get a little viewership um, because I think I think that, that, that this, this format is extremely important, and it looks like um, there is no lag. I have um, I'm watching my my internet feed on Ustream, and it looks like they whatever problems that Ustream had in the past they have fixed. Um, it looks great. There are no uh, there's almost no lag at all. 
and it's not binding up. You know, there's no every day I'm buffering, I'm buffering, I'm buffering uh, going on. We're able, and we are able to record this show as well. So this show will be available on our Ustream channel. Um, if you didn't, if if you didn't get to see the whole thing, or if um, uh, you want to share it with somebody else, it's up and available, and uh, you, so so you so you will be able to see it and check it out. All right, somebody else likes our post. Oh, that's the one about. You know, it's interesting that I think it's kind of I don't know. I and I, I guess I, I guess I was upset about it earlier, um, but. Uh, a lot of of us who are involved in the community or involved politically um, think that some of our posts um, are important and selling and making salient points, and, and and really deserve a lot of attention on Facebook, especially. And it doesn't and they don't get it. You know what? Maybe two or three likes, maybe sixteen people see it. But on April twenty first, I posted a meme that says. And it's just words. It's accidentally went to gro went grocery shopping on an empty stomach. Now I'm the proud owner of aisle four. I posted that on my from my phone on my car that I saw it. I thought it was kind of funny, and it's got 340 like 343 likes, 47 shares. Way more than anything else I have ever posted about anything, which blows me away. More than anything that I've ever posted about anything. 343 likes, 47 shares. On I accidentally went shopping on an empty stomach. Now I'm the proud owner of aisle four. Now we have posted things about um, transportation and I want to talk about transportation. If you ask me about it, I'd like to talk about transportation. I, um, I have put up a survey on my Facebook page, Lawson for Commission. Let's see here, there it is. Um, a poll to get the feeling of uh, what people think about light rail. And the question is simple. Do you believe that light rail is a vital piece of the puzzle for Hillsborough County in the next 30 years? not everybody does now I know there are people who do I understand and what I'm trying to find out frankly I'm trying to find out who does do most people in Hillsborough County believe that light rail is an integral part a vital part of the future of Hillsborough County over the next 30 years well and I'm going to uh, I'm going to gonna tell you right now what um, let's see so far what the results of that poll are and it will be a continuing poll I will leave it up and um, I, I know that my friend Don Cruz already told me what he thought the results would be and dag nabbit he's close the question again is is light rail a vital piece of the puzzle for Hillsborough County in the next 30 years? There are three answers. I don't know, without doubt, or absolutely not. Absolutely not is 63% um, of the respondents say absolutely not, that light rail is not a vital piece of the puzzle for Hillsborough County in the next 30 years. Absolutely not. 33% of the people who responded to this poll said that uh, light rail is a vital piece of the puzzle of Hillsborough County in the next 30 years, without doubt. Only 4% of people said they didn't know. 63% of people so far who participated in this poll is light rail a vital piece of the puzzle for Hillsborough County in the next 30 years 63% of people said absolutely not. Absolutely not. All 33% of people said, without doubt, it is a vital piece of the puzzle. 
Now, I was going to take this poll down at the end of the day, but because I have decided to do this particular thing that we're doing now, this town hall, I'm, pro I'm going to go ahead and leave it up. So if you want to find it, go to my Facebook page, Lawson for Commission. Pretty easy to get to. Lawson for Commission. And answer the poll. Get your voice heard. What I want to be, make sure of is that I that you know that I'm ready to listen. That if, and everybody listens while they're campaigning, but I want to make sure that you know that I have um, put into place uh, things like this and social media ways to get a hold of me and interface with me to let you know that I am, I am interested in what you're saying. I am more interested in what you're saying than um, what political voices are saying to me. And, and I'll tell you what, political voices are constantly talking to those in elected offices. It's political voices, um, those who are writing checks, those who are lobbyists, those are the, who are the politicos, those who are the, are the Republican club presidents, or Democrat club presidents, or people who are members of the Tiger Bay Club, or whatever, are constantly constantly talking I mean and the only people that I'm really holding to that I care about what they say are the people that I represent and in this case these the residents of County Commission Hillsborough County Commission District 3 what they're saying what they want done what they believe are priorities yes I have priorities I have a plan and I have priorities. But you know what? My plan and priorities cannot supersede the people that I I will raise my right hand and put my other hand on the Bible to, to represent. We can't be at odds. And I won't be. And I'll make sure that I'm available to you. I'll make sure that I am accessible. I make I'll make sure that you see me in the district. Currently, that's not the case. Currently, that's not the case, and I and you know what? And I want it to be the case. I want to make sure that um, that the three branches uh, that uh, that represent people in District Three understand that we must work in unison, that we must work in concert to help the citizens of District Three. So I want to work with the um, the City Council. I want to work with the school board. I want to work with the state uh, state house and state senate. I want to work with um, the the U.S. The, the U.S. Rep. and the U.S. Senator for our district. I want to I want to make sure that we are all in concert. That we are all understanding who is our boss, and that we do whatever we have to do to make sure that where the people that we represent, especially where they overlap, are represented in an honorable, just, thoughtful manner. I think that that's what the difference is. I think that that'll make a difference, that that'll turn District 3 and the heart of Tampa and the heart of Hillsborough County into an engine that can't be stopped. That we'll be a model for the rest of the, we'll be a model for the rest of the country. When we sit down at that, at, at that table to talk about the issues with, with the citizens, to talk about the issues of this district, that we will be a model for the rest of the country. There won't be a better model. You know what? You know people always say this about government: that one hand doesn't know what the other hand's doing. You know that that you know that the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. Which create uh, which creates which which creates chaos, doesn't it? It creates um, chaos. It creates um, you know the you know these these points of, 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 deline of marks of delineation it creates turf wars and we got a little bit of that going on I think but I think there's only one way to make a difference make sure that doesn't happen anymore is to get people in these offices to work together I think it's important that I work with Ed Naren who is the who was uh, the house uh, the state house rep for people who live in my district, I think it's 
vital that I, Ed and I work together. I think it's vital that uh, f that Frank Reddick, who is the city council member of the, uh, and we have and we have an over overlapping constituency that we work together. I think that it is imperative that we work together. I don't think there's any way that we cannot work together. I mean, right now Doris Ross Reddick is the school board um, representative for most of my constituency. It's not possible that we can improve the quality of District 3 and School Board District 5 without working together. It's not possible. I don't care if they ever name anything after me. It doesn't make me any difference. Please don't name any buildings after me or any roadways or any rec centers or any parks or a blade of grass. That's not what this is about. What this is about is that at the end of the day, have we been honorable people? Have we lived up to the, th I mean, to the things that we vowed we would? Have we done what we said we would do? And have we done it in a way that the um, citizenry can be proud of? Have we, when we leave office, have we left things better than when we found them. That's what this is about for me. Um, will District 3 be better when I leave than when I got there? Yes. I guarantee it. Alright, listen, um, we're still checking and we haven't seen any emails yet, but you know what, like I said, uh, as we start this, it's going to start slow and that's fine. Uh, people will get the... Um, People will get the deal after a while, no doubt, and then and then the questions will roll in, and we will have a situation where we can't answer all the questions, and people will be mad. <laughs> we'll run out of time and can't answer all the questions, and people will be mad. Uh, but that's okay. I'm actually looking forward to that time. All right, all right. It um it's one forty, excuse me, one fifty four. We're gonna head out. We've been here for fifty four minutes. We're gonna head out. Thank you again um, for joining me this afternoon. Um, if you watched, give me some feedback at WLS860 at gmail.com. That's WLS860 at gmail.com. Until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, take care of yourself.